Top 10 most impactful cards on the European Championship this past weekend. Don't make 30% of you guys have not smashed the living crap out of that subscribe button. Smash it so we can climb up the 110,000 ladder here. Number one on our list here is actually going to be Psychic Life Transfer slash Red Resonator. Now, both of these cards serve a very functionally same purpose. We wee, 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 that is time in the round, Duelist. Oh, got to continue current phase. Better have my gigantic sprite beam out this red resonator, or I better be able to make, you know, oh, Psychic Life Transfer to gain some life points in time. Cards that function on abusing, <laughs> bunny ears there, the time rules in order to capitalize and give you a better chance to uh, recover is what we're going to say here, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the chance to win the game. Is it completely fair? It's a little bit annoying at the end of the day. Yes, but that's what you're looking at right now. Cards that can give you, uh, it doesn't even like the correct word, steal a victory will go with. That's what Gaga Cowboy was used for. Number two on the list here is going to be Curious, Light Sworn Dominion. Now, it's three monsters with the same attribute but different types. You're like, oh, that's kind of hard to make. Well, you're playing this in tier. All right, the thing you care about with this is on Link Summon, you can send one card from your deck to the graveyard, so you can access any of your tier elements monsters, and then you get the additional effect of if a card of cards is sent from your deck to the graveyard, by an effect, send three more. Oh, okay, so I get basically a mill four here from my deck. Seems good to me, right, ladies and gentlemen? Anytime you can access a Link monster like this as part of the Link Climbing, mill off a specific resource that you need to see, and then go ahead and further climb up into something else. Hmm, you know, seems relatively good to me. So do not underestimate what Curious is doing now, because he was a stepping stone into Zero Boros, and seeing Zero Boros just tear through the metagame out of this weekend was absolutely amazing to see. All right. The biggest staple out of the weekend here, I think, was Dark Roller No More. So many boards that needed to be broken. Oh my gosh. So many players looked at this event and pretty much said the same thing across the board. You know, Dark Roller No More has to be mandatory at this point. Like, you have to play this card in order to break these huge boards. And I do kind of agree with it. Is it fair that Combo can set up these incredibly oppressive boards that put you into such a bad position? Honestly, no. But that's kind of what Yu-Gi-Oh! is right now. It's where we set up this huge, unbreakable board, and your opponent slaps down Dark Ruler no more, and then they can't respond to anything, all right? That's usually why you like have a Solemn Judgment or a Pointer of the Red Lotus to rip away those particular cards or stop them in that case from actually resolving. So, very, very, very powerful player out of this weekend here. The next up was Triple Tactics Talent. So what happens when hand traps are running around, your opponent has all of these huge giant negates set up on the field? Wow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we access the Triple Tactics Talents Network. All right, so when you have a card that says, oh, your opponent just did something, you get what? <laughs> a change of heart, you get a pot of greed, or you get to look at your opponent's hand and send an option away. All right, well, in the case of one of the biggest plays that we've seen from this weekend, it allowed said player to look at the opponent's hand, rip a dark ruler no more away from them, which would have been a board breaker that they would have had to deal with. So, in that case, this card actually can act as an appointer of the Red Lotus on the offensive um, to turn the game back around, and I really, really like that. All right, so such a powerful card that gives so many effects, but it is reliant upon the choices of the opponent. Yes, this card is by far the nuts right now. All right, next up is Rika Con Con. Now, actually, I, I kind of wanted to put the whole deck here because this deck definitely took players by surprise this weekend. All right, you now have a field spell. It says if you control Rika Monster, you can set a Rika Spell or Trap card directly from your deck. Okay, so we can access the entire network. Then we get locked to the plants. Well, that'd be a real shame if Sun Avalon didn't exist, allowing me to just create a Link 1 and climb up the entire network of plants for free. And then if you attribute a plant monster you control to activate a Rika card or effect, you can attribute any one face of monster your opponent controls instead, even though you do not control it. Isn't that great? They gave plants the ability here to access Lair of Darkness. Hmm. 
but it's just better. Everything the plants have had waiting in, in the back finally are coming together as a chance to show players that, oh my gosh, we're really a competitive deck. Next up here is going to be Enemy Controller. Now, I, I heard rumor that Enemy Controller was starting to see a little bit more play. I, I didn't take much of a consideration or time to really think about it, but to be honest with you, once you kind of see Enemy Controller show up in the sprite deck, you're like, oh, okay. All of your sprite monsters that you deploy onto the field are essentially free, all right? Every level two is just like, well, you meet the requirements, go ahead and special summon it on out. Cool, you get to trigger your condition bound with that and continue on down the train, all right? Like, it's literally just free advantage chicken tendies the roll, all right? So when you can play something like that, oh, your opponent set up a very threatful monster. You can go ahead and play this. You can tribute take something. You can shift its position, all right? Enemy controller is one of those very cool tech options that you look at right now and you're like wow this is actually incredible yeah it it was definitely very very interesting to see work here next up is beat cop from the underworld uh so if this card is linked someone using two dark monsters with different names as material it gains the following effect you can tribute one monster target one face of card of the field place a patrol counter on it you can only use this effect to beat cop of the underworld once per turn and if a card with the patrol counter will be destroyed by battle or card effect you remove a patrol counter from it instead. Ladies and gentlemen, what happens when we have a Mystic Mine on the field and then we place a patrol counter on it to protect it? Hmm. But doesn't stop it from getting Cosmic Cyclone, which is very interesting, by the way, because Galaxy Cyclone was showing up this weekend, but Cosmic Cyclone was really nowhere to be seen. Don't gotta worry about Mystic Mine if you play Cosmic Cyclone to banish it, Five Head. Definitely... An interesting take nonetheless here, but we saw Herman bring out Beat Cop to protect Mystic Mine, and a lot of players were just like, oh my gosh, like, that's crazy, like, we never would have guessed that. Yeah, that's kind of what the weekend was about. Next up here is Shadow Imprisoning Mirror. Thank you for showing us that Shadow Imp is back. Literally, this is just one of the most basic Floodgate Trap cards in the game. It says, negate all dark monster effects activated on the field or in the graveyard. Well... The entire tier element stack for fusing is all dark. Wow. Which means, ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to worry about anything. Now, this was a side deck card that we saw the Altergeist player bring up and show the world that, hey, this is still working. Like, you need to look at this, all right? You need to look at the, the power that this deck has. All you got to do is break the board. Set this up and you're good to go. Unfortunately, this card dies to Harpy's Feather Duster, but, I mean, to be honest with you, what doesn't die to Harpy's Feather Duster in the current modern era of Yu-Gi-Oh? It's just kind of how it goes at the end of the day. So, Shadow Imprisoning Mirror showing back up as a side deck trend was very, very, very powerful. And then, of course, the big one of the weekend here was Ravelry of Warlords. Each player can only control one type of monster. Send all other face of monsters they control to the graveyard. Oh, boy. Altergeist and Plants out here. Both flipped this card up and detoured things. We also saw this out of the NA Championship a couple weeks ago, where Sword Soul used pretty much the same strategy. It's actually kind of hilarious that like both events came down to Rivalry of the Warlords here, being a power card destroying these huge off-type fields, all right? Like, this is what happens. What is it? Monotype go? I know there's a giant campaign for players wanting this card banned right now. <laughs> it's so bad like this and number one here are both on everybody's list but you know floodgates and things that can control like the tide of the game just play back row removal five head i think people forget that back row is an integral part of the game people just want the game to be mono you know combo 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 there are other aspects to the game all right and then of course the biggest card of the weekend was mystic mine back at it again ladies and gentlemen this card has affected two giant championships at this point, you know, showing that players are over committing. They're making these huge fields here. And this card, its entire purpose is to slow down the pace of the game, to give these players a chance to set up um, from these relatively huge fields. And is it fair at the end of the day? I don't think so. I think that it's it's kind of interesting at the end of the day to see where Mystic Mind has brought the game at this point, but alas, it's uh, it's definitely very, very, very powerful. 
So that is your top 10 most impactful cards out of Europe this past weekend. So what do you guys think? Please, if you comment down below, tell me what you guys think. Make sure you guys smash the little crap button that subscribe button. I'll see your beautiful faces back here later in the day, guys. Peace out. Patrons, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.